You said that you channeled a lot of your shadow, let's say, into creativity. Did yeah. you see the same thing happening with 50 Cent? Oh, my God. His music is incredibly aggressive. And that's and, 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 and uh, to an extent, it's kind of violent. And I must admit, it really appeals to me. So um, when I was why, writing... Why, the, why, That's cool, because it's so interesting yeah. that so many rap fans are yeah. young white guys. I know, they, well, I know. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's really psychologically interesting, right? Because well, if, if they've been yeah. coddled and their ambition has been squelched and everything about them that's aggressive has been shamed out of existence, it's that's part of that attraction of that dark fantasy, right? And then they yeah. see that aggression manifesting itself and in a creative form in rap, it's not surprising yeah. that they're going to try to imitate that. It's part of that abil that desire to bring that shadow out of the shadows and into the light. Well, I, I, I wasn't really, um, I was a little bit different in that um, I kind of understand, you know, my own anger. I wasn't so much coddled, but but what I really enjoyed mm -hmm. about the, his music is it just seemed very real and mm -hmm. and kind of the, the beat kind of catches you up in a primal sense and kind of the aggressiveness just seems very direct and very refreshing, by the way. Mm -hmm. And you could tell... You know, I say in, in my book, Mastery, that by a person's style, by how they write a book, by, the, by how they put language together or the music they create, reveals something very, very deep about their character, about who they are. And so a lot of rap kind of comes across as sort of false, like someone is trying really hard to have that kind of thug persona, and it's not real. But it, it really smelled authentic with him. And the fact that he'd been shot and nearly died, you know, just kind of added to that aura. But there was something very real about it and very authentic in a culture where so much isn't real. I think that was the deep, deep appeal in a primal sense of 50s music. And when I was writing the war book, I was trying to get myself in a martial mood to write it. I would actually listen to his music to kind of put me in the mood to write some of the chapters. Hmm. That, in hmm. that in Beethoven. Hmm. Hmm. What, what, what do you like from what, what Beethoven do you like? What, what pumped you up? Well, when I was a kid, one of the first albums, I was first kind of raised on classical music. Then I got into jazz and rock and everything, but I got a collection of his nine symphonies and God, there's, there's a kind of a, a an aggression and violence, like to the fifth symphony and the ninth symphony. It just kind of, you know, like they used oh, yeah. clockwork orange. There's something so overwhelmingly powerful about it, right? It just you yes, can't. Yes, the choral I mean, section have, in the ninth is like that. It's and so the ode powerful. to joy. Yeah, and it's so yeah. isn't that so interesting that the ode yeah. to joy has that primal aggressive force, and it it, does. And, and it makes joy. It makes joy is you know in in the naive sense it's well you're happy it's like no <laughs> this joy is that integrated terrible power that you yeah. definitely hear in uh, superb music. Yeah, yeah. And, and so and when it when that when that choral bit kicks in, it's just overwhelming. Oh, it's like it a just blow and makes you tingle. It's it's mm -hmm. so exciting. And I've heard it maybe a thousand times since then, and it still affects me the same way. And now when I'm driving somewhere and I have to get myself in the mood, I'll still put the night symphony on.